Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I rise today to um, address Bill C624, an act to amend the national anthem with respect to gender. The official lyrics are based on a poem written in 1908 by Justice Robert Stanley Weir. Although changes to the original poem were made prior to the adoption of the national anthem, it must be mentioned that no changes have been made to the English version since its adoption. Bill C-624 proposes to change the anthem by removing the words, thy sons, and inserting the words, of us, in the English version of the national anthem. This line was inserted in 1914 by Robert Stanley Weir, the original author, and has remained unchanged for a hundred years. Mr. Speaker, the lyrics to O Canada are symbolic. The anthem, in its current form, is important to Canadians. O Canada is not only a source of pride and a reflection of our nature, nation. It is loved by Canadians as it is. It is part of our historical legacy. As studies have shown, the anthem continues to be a sense of pride and belonging. A 2012 survey found that 78% of Canadians believe our national anthem to be a great source of pride, and another poll conducted in the same year found that 74% of Canadians believe that our national anthem best reflects what Canada really is. The anthem is a very important Canadian symbol. As more recent surveys have revealed, the majority of Canadians oppose changing the anthem to make it gender neutral. A 2013 study found that 65% of Canadians oppose the change, including 61% of women. Only 25% supported a change to, ge to gender neutrality. The sponsor of the bill correctly mentioned that this poll used the phrase, her sons instead of thy sons. And while this is correct, his reasoning is that Canadians who were asked a question over the telephone instantly thought that this was a reference to our Queen and opposed the change. Considering there was an off-cited 2002 poll that showed only 5% of Canadians actually knew our Head of State was the Queen, this line of reasoning shows the member is stretching this issue just a little. The core question in the 2013 poll still ask Canadians if they wanted a gender-neutral anthem, and, Mr. Speaker, 65% of Canadians said they did not. In fact, 61% of women in that survey said they did not want a gender-neutral anthem. Supporting this bill could send the message to Canadians that their opinions do not matter and that Parliament doesn't want to listen to them. O Canada is an anthem, and Parliament shouldn't swap out phrases without the support of all Canadians. And Mr. Speaker, I, I strongly disagree with the NDP member for Vancouver East, who in our, in our previous hour of debate said that O Canada was, and I quote, offensive. That's the word she used. And I can uh, tell her, uh, tell her uh, the member from Vancouver East, uh, Mr. Speaker, that the person who sits uh, next to her, uh, the leader of the opposition, uh, quoted and has been quoted as saying, I think that when you start tinkering with an institution like a national anthem, you're just looking for, that you're looking for problems. We seem to have agreed on the English and French versions as they are, and I think that's probably a good thing. End of quote. I don't think I'd be saying this, but I agree with, I didn't, I didn't think, Mr. Speaker, I would stand up in the House and say that I'd be agreeing with the uh, Leader of the Opposition on too many things. But I, I think on this issue he's got it right. And I think he should share his concerns with the member for Vancouver East who said in February that opposition to this anthem was a no-brainer. Mr. Speaker, I, I think it's outrageous uh, that the Canadian national anthem, regardless of what your position on this particular issue is, whether you think it should be changed or shouldn't be changed, uh, should, be should be calling our, our, our anthem outrageous. Uh, it is a source of pride uh, for Canadians across the country uh, in fact, her own leader uh, called the anthem wonderful, stated the anthem shouldn't be changed, and that it is what uh, should, it should be uh, in terms of its importance to Canadians. And I do think, uh, Mr. Speaker, that the, the member from Vancouver East, uh, while her position on the anthem uh, is hers to hold, uh, that she should actually apologize to the House and withdraw the remarks uh, that she made about our Canadian national anthem. Uh, I can't think of another country uh, in any type of parliament 
uh, or um, House of Representatives that uh, would have uh, heard any member stand up to, uh, to say that about their national anthem. Mr. Speaker, our government is committed to recognizing women who have individually and collectively helped build the strong, proud and free Canada that we have today. And every year, commemorative events such as International Women's Day, Women's History Month, and important events such as the Governor General Awards in commemoration of the person's case represent important occasions when all Canadians recognize the tremendous contributions women make to all aspects of Canadian life. As an example, initiatives for the commemoration of World War I and World War II include recognizing the invaluable role Canadian women played in our country's military efforts. Canada also recognizes and celebrates the instrumental role Canadian women have played to build our great country during Women's History Month. During this month, we recognize the contribution of Canadian women and highlight their achievements in all areas of life – politics, sports, medicine, business, education, and it goes on, Mr. Speaker. Not to mention the vital accomplishments of the famous five – Emily Murphy, Nellie McClung, Henrietta Muir Edwards, Louise McKinney, and Irene Harlby. Women whose leadership in the fight for equality paved the way for future generations and whose statues stand just to the east of this building on Parliament Hill. Our government has done much to help ensure the many contributions and achievements of women are recognized and their remarkable role in society is highlighted. I do believe in gender equality, Mr. Speaker, and so does everyone on both sides of this House. And we recognize and definitely highlight the incredible and numerous contributions women have made to the building of our beloved country. I do not, however, believe that changing our national anthem is a way to accomplish this. Neither do the majority of Canadians, including the majority of Canadian women. Supporting the bill, Mr. Speaker, would also open the door to further proposals to change the national anthem. You open the Pandora's box to further changes and weaken the anthem as a symbol. Given that Canadians have already spoken loudly and clearly on this issue, I will not be supporting this bill. I do understand why the sponsor put this bill forward, and our government proposed a similar change in the 2010 speech from the throne. The reaction, Mr. Speaker, was overwhelming. And while um, some members of the opposition uh, may claim from time to time uh, that the government doesn't listen to what Canadians are saying, uh, on this issue, Mr. Speaker, immediately after learning what the reaction uh, to the change in the anthem, and don't forget this was shortly after our huge successes uh, in Vancouver at our, the Olympics uh, that we hosted, uh, there was a sense of pride. Uh, this anthem was sung so many times across this country. Uh, and the reaction to the type of change uh, that we had put forward, a, a moderate change, not unlike the, uh, the one made uh, by the member, uh, but it was a reaction that led us to understand that this is an anthem that is sacred, this is an anthem that is uh, enjoyed by Canadians and is not an anthem that should be subjected to any form of change. Mr. Speaker, the lyrics to O Canada are symbolic and are deeply rooted in tradition. It is a great source of pride to Canadians. We have a responsibility to maintain and protect our national symbols. Mr. Speaker, our anthem is one of those symbols. Uh, any form of change uh, to a, an anthem that has uh, memorized, known and sung literally hundreds of times a day uh, in our country, whether it be, uh, and, and, and it doesn't matter geography, Mr. Speaker, all of those that are part of this country that are Canadian citizens uh, understand, know and love what our national anthem stands for. Uh, they understand the importance and the significance uh, and the symbolism of not changing that anthem. And uh, Mr. Speaker, if I might, there are very few, uh, very few countries that delve into uh, changing uh, the, the symbol which is their national anthem. Yeah. And when you open the door to change, Mr. Speaker, uh, there are going to be those that are lined up, uh, whether they be, um, uh, whether it be this issue with respect to the anthem or another. And I believe that the best way to maintain this, the symbolism and the uh, importance of this anthem is to keep it exactly the way it is, Mr. Speaker. Everyone understands it, everyone knows what it stands for, and everyone loves singing O Canada. Thank you.